Tarot cards gained their popularity in Europe in the mid-15th century, most likely being introduced from Egypt and very quickly spreading as a card game originally. Later on, they were treated as a tool for divination and prophecy, as they are still portrayed to this day. Many people charge hundreds of dollars for readings, and in actuality it's something anyone can do. You don't need to be an expert and it can actually be quite fun once we start using tarot as a self-reflective tool. But how exactly does that work? Let's take the 78 cards that a deck typically has. Imagine your subconscious being split into 78 aspects, or if you use inversions as well, make it 156 aspects, with positives and negatives delineated. Now imagine being surrounded by a sphere of the same amount of mirrors, each mirror being an aspect or a reflection of yourself. This doesn't mean everyone's subconscious is literally made of 78 or 156 aspects, but it implies the act of diluting your overall psyche to these 78 archetypes within the major and minor arcanas. Now when we shuffle a deck, or gain permission to shuffle when reading for someone, we are imprinting their energy and question within the motions of the shuffle. Thus, a reading does require a question, but the objective is not a prophetic answer. It's the blueprints for how to tackle the situation and exploring deeper concepts within your own mind using a visual and allegorical map. Back to the sphere of mirrors surrounding you. Imagine each mirror is turned away and not reflective. When the cards in the reading are laid out, these are the mirrors or aspects of yourself that turn to face you, each card's archetype being applied to the question in mind. This means if someone else is reading for you, they don't actually need to know your question and aren't supposed to pose advice afterwards. That comes from within you and how you apply the cards that popped out and their meanings to your question. That's why we encourage everyone to do readings for themselves if they are interested in it. What the cards tell us is often what we try to tell ourselves, but we can't reach into our own subconscious past arm's length just naturally. Dreams often try to provide us with solutions to problems in our waking lives by placing heavy emphasis on aspects that need to be noticed, causing them to pop up in either such quantity or notoriety that the sleeping mind half fires to take note of it. Tarot is quite literally a visual, archetype-based, self-reflective form of mindfulness. So let's just go through what a reading like this would look like. You get into your comfort zone, whether that's indoors, outdoors, using accompanying tools like incense or sage to clear your focus. While shuffling your cards, you think of a question to yourself. Sometimes it's hard to form a verbal one right away, and sometimes you might find your question being shortened or lengthened in the reading's focus, meaning your question wasn't big enough or too small in your own subconscious's opinion. There is no right way to shuffle, but the question or intention should be made up before finishing the shuffle. Laying out your cards into a spread of your choice, you uncover each as you interpret the meaning of the card and the meaning of the position. There are hundreds of spreads that have developed over the years, and really there is no right one when you think about it, as our subconscious is much greater than what dreams and tarot can reach combined. It can be diluted and interpreted upon through an infinite variety of templates the most popular being the Celtic Cross. Our subconscious is reaching out to us more than we are to it. Many methods can be used to close the distance, but ultimately we are always trying to tell ourselves something, and we ourselves are our best teachers. 
Each position in the layout has a designated role for the cards that end up in each of the positions in the spread. Once a card's meaning is applied to a position's meaning, both are then applied to the question in mind. The self-reflection then comes through interpreting what exactly you're trying to tell yourself. Tarot can also be used to keep a diary. Take this spread for example. Present, desires, helpful matters, challenges, and outcome. The card that would be in the outcome position is not what the outcome of your question will ultimately be. It's what you are trying to remind yourself to consider in regards to your question. It all comes from within the person, and is a visual externalization of our minds, not to its potential by a long shot, but it has very beneficial applications in terms of mindfulness. Tarot can also be used in conjunction with many other systems of practice, as the universality of tarot's infinite templates allows for cohesive interweaving of other systems, such as the four primal elements, astrology, Kabbalah, numerology, crystals, and even Cathara. This interweaving creates what is called correspondences, which help to additionally expand the templates that we reflect upon. For example, the minor arcana of tarot is made of four suits, and this is actually where modern playing cards come from. The minor arcana of modern times is infused with the four elements, each being claimed by a suit. These are further infused with a variety of alternating systems. Whether the reader wishes to expand on the complexity of the deck or not use these aspects, such as the four classical elements, doesn't affect the results of this self-reflection. If anything, it is encouraged to ultimately just read tarot the way you want to, and even come up with your own spread, as this maximizes your clarity in your approach towards your subconscious mind. The underlining message here today being that tarot is a visual aid and form of mindfulness, and that anyone could and should try doing it. You never know how much you might surprise yourself with your own interpretations. Thank you so much for watching, we hope you enjoyed this video.